parents all over the state do so much and have a lot to share. So CSCA has created Let's Talk Para, where we chat and share stories. Thank you so much for joining me today, Juliana. Juliana works out of the Windsor Unified School District with special needs grades pre-K. I myself uh, work at a San Diego Unified School District and I currently am working in third grade. I've noticed some challenges when it comes to social emotional learning that impacts their confidence, which then creates anxiety. And I've been noticing the struggles across the state are all similar to what I'm seeing down here in Area K. How about yourself? Definitely. I'm in Area B and um, we've had, in addition to the pandemic, we've had a lot of wildfires and, you know, these kiddos have really gone through a lot. There's a lot of anxiety um, and adults and the kids. And we really have to get down to the, the foundation again and talk about the social and emotional needs of everybody and, and then start building from that. Absolutely, because then if we pay attention to what's going on with ourselves, right? We're often overworked, we're underpaid, and this heart work that we tend to do comes at that like crossroad. We wanna be able to give all, all to these kiddos but are having similar struggles as well. This job right now, it looks completely different than what it did before the pandemic. And it has so many different layers that are impacted and we wanna make sure that we're doing right by these kids. So it's that extra layer of either uh, trauma-informed responses, making sure we're utilizing different uh, behavior strategies as well as self-regulation. Uh, so how has this time looked like for your kiddos? Um, my kiddos are, are young, and so most of them have not had a chance to play with peers. So they're really struggling with that. And typically we, we have kids come into um, preschool and they're, you know, they've played with children or they've gone to the park and now they don't have that experience. So we're, we're starting over with them. Um, and I know with the older kids, it's the same thing. I know that some of them have not had a typical school year yet um, in all of their academic career. So that, that makes it really hard to buckle down and learn when you're still trying to figure out where does your body need to be in the classroom or how does your voice need to be modulated or why can't I be on the tablet all day? Right, absolutely, especially because I went into a second grade class. I noticed exactly what you just said right now. A lot of the second graders are, their body isn't accustomed to it. And it looks very similar to kindergarten class when we know that the second graders only had a little bit of kindergarten before the closure. So that definitely impacts academics as well as social emotional. What is something that you do to help with your mental health? So for me, I like to laugh. And so I will read something funny or watch something on TV or go for a walk with my husband. And I have a daily phone call with my best friend where it's, you know, teletherapy. Um, but it, it really does kind of give me that chance to recharge for the next day. Um, we put a lot of energy and heart into our work. And if we come in and we're already behind the eight ball, it's really hard to, to keep up and to, to do all the things that we need to do for our kids. For me, in the moment, if I'm flustered, I like to take a few deep breaths. That's what I constantly am modeling for the students. But the other strategy that I like to take in at home is not not try to overwhelm myself with a bunch of work i have to pace myself because if i go too fast i am going to make mistakes then get flustered and then go back and have to fix them so i i like to practice the strategy that i learned uh from one of the teachers i was working with go slow to go fast take my time do things right and then after it's all said and done and i've built a routine it'll become smoother, quicker, and faster. So I like to, I like to practice that myself. Mm -hmm. And it's good modeling for our kids. So 
Absolutely, absolutely. Besides holding my cat and um, spending time with my husband, those are things that I like to do to recharge. So I liked the comment that you, you said that you like to laugh. So what is your laugh out loud moment of the day today? So today it's really windy and we were outside on the playground gathering leaves. We're thinking about trees and I was picking up all these leaves and a kid came up and just started cracking up. My hair was blowing in the wind and I have no idea why that was as funny to him as it was, but he was literally rolling around on the ground, cracking up and all the other kids were running over to see what was so funny. And I don't know, how do you explain that this is funny? I don't know but we were just all cracking up. And that's still, that was what, six hours ago? And I'm still like giggling inside about that. How about you? I had a situation during lunchtime and a student comes up to me, hands me something. I have this habit of like opening my hand blindly and not really paying attention to what they put in my hand. And they put this something, something soggy in my hand and they asked me, can I get paper towels? I spilled. I'm like, absolutely, the lunch lady will uh, be able to hand you paper towels. Is everything okay? And that's when I looked down. And I was looking at this soggy uh, sandwich bun from the lunch today. And I could not figure out what spilled, but I also did not want to know. Mm -hmm. And all that came out was laughter, not directed to the kids or anything, but I chuckled like, ah, okay. Go ahead, there should be paper towels right over there. Clean up what you need to clean up. Everything will be okay. Things like that are just normal in a K, K through five or even preschool situation where things were gonna happen and sometimes we just gotta laugh them off. So before we got on the call, I think one of my favorite lines that you said was, this is the hardest job you'll ever love. And I think that is so true. I mean, these kiddos need us and paras in the classroom is what helps these kids be successful. You know, it's, yeah, there's little stories and yeah, there's frustrations, but without us, they would be struggling even more. And so we're very lucky to be in that position to be able to help them. Absolutely. So I think this is my reminder to be gentle with ourselves. Maybe we got caught up in a bad day. Sometimes we'll have our good days, but we learn from our bad days and get reminded that this is our heart work that we do. So everyone, thank you for joining us. Be gentle with yourself. This is heart work. So until we meet again, if you can email us your response to our question, of this episode. In this heart work, how do you recharge? Please email it at para at csca.com. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Are you a paraeducator? Do you want to learn how to better serve your students? Or is it that you're looking to manage your emotions just a little bit better with that student that knows how to push all of your buttons? Maybe it's that you just want to be better at your job, no matter who it is that you're working with. We have heard from you. You're passionate about your job, passionate about your students, and you just want to go in every day and make the world a little bit better. However, this job is not for the faint of heart. It's ever-changing and you are constantly on your toes. Being equipped with the knowledge and skills to help your kiddos is where your head and heart is at. And CSEA is here for you. We had the premier online learning center for paraeducators, PATH, the Paraeducator Accelerated Training Hub. Hear from experts in their field, breaking down some of the hardest behavioral challenges and giving you their experience and strategies. 
path includes more than 40 on-demand trainings. Think of it as Netflix for learning. The trainings are video lessons you can watch and return to anytime and have access to 24 hours a day. The topics range widely and include current issues you're dealing with in the classroom today. To learn more, go to www.csa.com forward slash path or email us at para at csa.com.